a little less than three years ago, August 2015, my wife Sasha and I started the process of converting this one section of our front yard from a wet lawn and forsythia into what you see in front of you. The total budget of the initial transformation was zero dollars, and I want to talk about how we did it. Of course, things like these cattle panel trellises and hoops and the high tunnel have a little bit of cost, but not much. But the actual conversion of the grass and forsythia into this luscious production space cost us zero dollars, and I'd like to talk about that. So in the spring of 2015, we got word that they're going to redo this whole road. And so the road crews that came through were itching to find a place to dump wood chips, and we were that place. And what we did is basically talked with them, had them begin dumping all their wood chips, if you can imagine, back in the corner right near the trees. They dumped a couple truckloads. So wherever you live, it's possible that there might be a uh, timber company or a line management crew, a road crew, an arborist that needs a place to dump chips. And we took those chips that were laid out in the corner and some hand tools, some loppers, and we went through where there was all forsythia in this area and simply chopped the forsythia into small pieces and laid them down into what is now a bed completely loaded with raspberries and elderberries, sorrel and asparagus, and all sorts of beauty. So this was a hugel mound laid up in August of 2015. It took a little while to break down. I talked about this in another video. Their hugel mounds are amazing. They're very fertile, but they take a little while to evolve. The rest of these beds were laid out with initial sketches of hay as boundaries, just to rough sketch where we wanted them, and then infilled with rotting wood chips and a little bit of compost from our chicken operation. In other words, we basically just kept building up and up and up. And each year we've been adding a little more compost, a little more wood chips as we have them. We've inoculated the walkways with wine cap mushroom, and now we're in a point where this space, which was a marginal, mucky, hard to mow, ugly lawn, useless, costly lawn, now has enough plant material for the nursery to generate many, many thousands of dollars per season in a system that is beautiful. It has support for our ecological needs around uh, birds and wildlife. You can hear them all teeming on the edges, waiting for us to get out of the way. And it's productive and provides a lot of food for us. I thought I'd break down just one of the beds here, and I'm going to take some advice from a friend of mine, a fellow named Josh up in Canada who came to visit, suggested, hey, if you're going to rattle off names of plants that you're working with, why not list them in the description? So. I'll rattle them off quickly here, and I'll list them in the description as well. But in just this one bed, this gives you an example of what you can grow uh, in your front yard if you chose to. We have, starting at the eastern side, a white bunching shallot as a border. This is just getting started. We've got some ever-bearing strawberries growing along here. They'll provide a nice ground cover over time. Monarda punctata, or spotted bee balm. On the back end here is beautiful bloody dock as a medicinal and potential vegetable for us, along with buckhorn plantain. Thanks, Mark, for seeds on this beautiful uh, edible version of a plantain. We've got true blue hyssop as an aromatic confuser support plant defender for Xanthocerus sorbifolium, or yellow horn, which is part of our nursery crop. So we're growing out these nursery beds of yellow horn, nitrogen-fixing, beautiful tree. Uh, shiso, which just showed up, but I'm happy to have it here, so we are leaving it. Then we've got a block of white mulberry seedlings growing out. There's about two or three hundred mulberries in here. And again, you can see on the edge there the ever-bearing strawberries. On the northern end of this is a cultivar goji, goji berry, which we're stool layering to uh, help it root. We've got a wild autumn olive that my friend 
found. This one's not really growing as well, but it's doing it. And then it transitions from nursery over to our food crops. So this is a cultivar uh, dandelion. We've got some parsley, some beets for us. These little trees in here are Carpathian walnut seedlings. More beets. And then it transitions into... These are named varieties of Jerusalem artichoke and groundnut from Oikos tree crops. So we got one little block here and another block in this bed. And then this bed ends up with just cuttings of Marge elderberry. So for our nursery, for selling these plants online or locally, this one bed is providing a fair amount of food for us but also maybe $1,000 worth of plant material. Now imagine how much of that space could have just been lawn that we mowed, wet, ugly, stupid lawn, and now it's this. We'll dig all this up this fall and have a fun, creative time deciding next spring what sort of amazing plants to rotate through the system. We did invest a little bit of money, so here are cattle panels formed into simple arches with locust staves hammered in the bottoms to hold them in. And here we're growing out cultivar black cap raspberries. Um, I believe this is Ohio's treasure, which is just loaded with young fruit. It's on its way. And so you can see the black cap is woven through the lower part of this trellis. And above the top of the trellis, we have hardy kiwi being woven. We'll see how that all works. This whole end of the garden is for more vining crops. So we have Shisandra chinensis, so Wu Weiju, or a very beautiful uh, medicinal Chinese fruit grown from seed. This is their third year. This, uh, this fall we'll dig them out and transplant them. And Hoblitzia, Chinese or uh, Caucasian mountain spinach. And this whole boundary, this beautiful fern-like boundary, is all bronze fennel, which we sell through the nursery but also enjoy. And my gosh, what a beautiful edging plant this makes. Way more nursery stock. I feel like I could bore people to death if I just went through every plant. But let me say this, zooming out. This one area, which is probably about maybe 25 feet wide, 30 feet, 40 feet long, has upwards to three or four hundred well, at least two to three hundred different varieties of plants in it, all packed in like crazy, and doing beautiful things. So, so right next to a busy road on a wet site with marginal beginnings and a zero dollar budget for the transformation, two hundred dollars if you're including the archways and that cattle panel greenhouse, on a busy road in an area where we don't have a lot of support from neighbors to do so. This area is transformed. This is year three. This is what your front yard could look like if you chose or if you found this beautiful and interesting. Uh, we didn't ask for permission from the neighbors. We know that some folks like it, some folks don't. That's up to them. So if you're in a space that you're paying taxes or you're paying rent, and you have an opportunity at all to transition your yard over to food production, you absolutely can do it. It's beautiful and very worthwhile. Thanks for watching.